Hi friends. Hello. Hi. So today's video um, is going to be a little bit more intense and a little bit more, you've read the title. I'm sure you're aware of like what we're about to talk about. Um, candle of the day is champagne toast. It doesn't matter, but <laughs> I feel weird not giving my normal intro, but this video is pretty serious. Um, there's a lot to talk about and a lot to unpack and a lot to discuss. And I think I personally have a lot of thoughts as I'm sure all of you do about this situation. Um, but I do want to be respectful and mindful of the fact that this is not a like tea. I feel like it's, I feel like deja vu right now to the David Dobrik stuff, but this is not a tea video. This is not a drama video. This is not, you know, something that should be taken lightly. These are very, very serious issues with victims involved. I also want to give a trigger warning for this topic in general. I feel like there has been a lot of really upsetting things happening in the YouTube space lately that I know for me personally have been incredibly uh, triggering and bringing up old trauma and very upsetting and has taken a toll on my personal mental health just as a person watching all of this go down. So I want to just say to anybody who has been a survivor of or anybody who is going through those things or currently in the past, whatever, if this is taking a mental toll on you, take a break from the internet and, and don't feel like you need to keep up with everything. I feel like that's a really important message to get across here because it's a very, very triggering and upsetting time for a lot of reasons. I'm going to explain why for me later in this video, but I do just want to say that. Don't feel like you have to keep up with everything that's happening because it is a lot. So let's jump into this. Um, one of the top beauty creators um, in our YouTube space uploaded a video basically admitting to a crime as if he were owning up to and admitting to not disclosing a sponsorship properly. He uploaded a YouTube apology video for an actual crime. And not only is it like a crime, <laughs> it's like a very serious crime that has victims involved in it. The likes to dislikes on this video are incredibly telling of how this apology is being received and that I think a lot of people, particularly James's young uh, impressionable audience are falling for and believing this apology. And not only is that apparent, but also it's apparent that this video is going to be viewed millions and millions of times by millions of different people. Um, and I think it's important to talk about the lasting impact of that. Over the last month, a lot of children have been coming forward and discussing their experience with James Charles, discussing the inappropriate conduct that he had in messages, whether it be sending flirty messages to a child who was 15, sending nude photographs to children who were under the age of 18. Leave the boy who came forward was 16. And basically every day it seems like more and more allegations are coming out that not only has he been sexually inappropriate with minors, um, he has also been inappropriate in messages with people who are over the age of 18 and adults and made people feel uncomfortable in that regard as well. In his video and also the statement he made a couple of weeks ago, James has really only owned up to three of those accusations and admitted to them. However, I think personally, even if you only look at the three that he's owned up to, the three that he has confirmed, I believe that three people coming forward who are under the age of 18 saying that they felt the messages were inappropriate, I believe that that is enough to show a pattern of behavior. So even if you don't want to believe all of the other people coming forward, the three that he has confirmed is enough, in my opinion, to prove a pattern of behavior. And I think that that's the first place we need to start because a lot of people accuse the kids that are coming forward of saying they're just clout chasers, of saying that they just tricked James for attention. They just tricked tricked him in order to get some fame, to get some likes on TikTok. That's a lot of rhetoric I'm seeing about the kids that are coming forward. And the thing is, if this was a one-time thing, one time a kid came forward, James could prove that the kid lied about his age. He could prove that as soon as he found out, he immediately stopped talking to him. If this was like a one-time, okay, I made a mistake, I genuinely didn't know, I think that that would be a little bit different of a situation than what this is, which is a pattern of behavior of continuing being caught messaging and talking to underage boys. There is no excuse. You can't just keep saying, oh, well, the kids lied to me. And honestly, in James's apology, he alludes to the fact that he has screenshots and evidence that would somewhat exonerate him, which in my opinion is just another form of victim blaming. He's trying to act like he's really holding himself accountable, but even alluding to the fact that this is in any way the children's fault when it's happened multiple times 
times at this point is absurd. His excuse time and time again is that these children lied to him. And now he has added in an extra little bit of spice to the conversation by saying not only were these children lying to him, but on top of that, he is desperate as a person. He is desperate to date somebody. And because he was so desperate for love, he is blinded by all of the red flags and warning signs. The red flags being those children not being legally able to consent to those conversations. And I think the comment about being desperate is a really, really good place to start here. I think a lot of people can empathize with that argument, which is why I think James made it. I think a lot of people can empathize with feeling desperate, with doing something stupid because you love someone, with feeling like you're going to be alone, so you need to do something to like not be alone anymore, to making mistakes sometimes. Like I went to a high school with like 30 boys in my class and I couldn't get any of them to date me. I understand the feeling of being young and feeling like you'll never find love. I'm sure a lot of people can empathize with that. However, the distinguishing factor there, most people don't get so desperate that they stoop to adding children into their dating pool. That is the difference with that. Most of us, no matter how desperate or how infatuated we were with the idea of being in a relationship, don't stoop to the level of victimizing minors. For James to use words such as I was just desperate in regards to this situation is sickening. Now, on top of that, on top of the reason he gave, which was that he was desperate, on top of all of that, James also went on to discuss in his apology power imbalances and how he never understood power imbalances and the power imbalance that he may have over people before, but that now he does understand it. And now, after reflecting, he gets it. And he went on to explain what the power imbalances would be. I talked about this in my David Dobrik video. I said apologies are the benchmark. And the reason that you give an apology is to give a comprehensive understanding that you get why you hurt people, right? That's the whole point of the apology. You can't move on to like be better until you have a comprehensive understanding of why you hurt people. So in theory, that checks the box. He was able to adequately explain what a power imbalance is, which is why I think, again, other people are starting to buy this is because it's like, well, he can explain what he did wrong. There are some situations where just because you can now sit back after three years of being called out for this behavior after three years of this, because this isn't the first time this happened. This is basically every single allegation that was happening during the bi sister scandal. This is, this is what this is. Like, this is the exact same behavior that he was being called out for back in 2019. This was exactly what that was. So after three years, uh, after having a paper trail of boys and men coming forward saying that you acted inappropriately with them, that you used your power and balance to hurt them, after three years of that, now, just because you can define what that means and you can define the power imbalance doesn't make anything better. And frankly, the fact that you still feel the need to clarify, oh, everybody that I talk to from now on will have to go through a process of submitting their identification to my team and having their ID be verified, frankly, that kind of means that you still don't get the fucking point. You discuss power imbalances and you discuss all of these things, but two weeks ago, you put out a, a, your notes app apology which was a response to the first child that you sent nude photographs to. For that, it was full of victim blaming. It had nothing to do with taking personal accountability. It had nothing to do with actually taking responsibility and discussing the power imbalance that you held over that child, who his first message to you was, hi sister, I'm a big fan. You had no knowledge or understanding two weeks ago of why using your fans, your children fans, as a dating pool was wrong, but now you have a comprehensive understanding. I'm sorry, if I don't buy that. And that's what I think the root of the problem is. No matter how quote unquote good this apology video was, no matter how well he could get on and really try to explain his like mindset behind doing these things, no matter how good that was, it wouldn't be enough given the severity of the situation. Even if James Charles's defense, which this is what it appears to be, is that these children lied to him. Even if that was his defense, we have laws that protect that. Negligence and ignorance are not a defense in our legal system in most states for acts like like this, for sending nude images to a minor, for trying to sexually engage with a minor. Ignorance is not a defense in a court of law for a reason, and that reason is to protect children. So the problem is, even if you listen to James's apology and you can wrap your head around it and you can understand it, that still doesn't excuse what happened and what he did. And this is the other thing that really gets me. And this is the part where, this is what I get really upset about when I talk about this, is that 
Number one, James Charles has now not only done all of this, but he has facilitated a conversation on the internet with rhetoric that blames the child in the situation who came forward, that blames them. There's victim blaming happening to children on the internet right now for coming forward about their experience with this grown 21-year-old man. Those children are facing harassment for coming forward and speaking about the illegal things that he did. And this is not specific to this situation. Anytime anybody comes forward about something as serious as this, anytime anybody comes out with a story, there is so much victim blaming and shaming surrounding people who come forward with these stories, especially against public figures, especially against well-liked figures. So what is this teaching the fans of James Charles, who are going to harass and attack these children now, because James has openly come forward multiple times and said, well, they lied to me, so it's on them. It's their fault. Blame the children. What does it teach the fans who are going to harass and attack those kids? What is that teaching them going forward in their life? The values that they should be learning in life, which is to believe victims, to not blame victims, to not shame victims. We're going backwards because of this situation. And on top of that, for every victim that is watching this situation play out, victim especially of powerful people, because there's a lot of those. There's a lot of people who have been assaulted, who have been hurt, who have been just ridiculed by people in power, because we historically see that that is what people with power do. All of those people are watching this situation play out. They're watching these children be vilified because they were starstruck talking to one of the biggest celebrities of their generation and weren't fully honest about their age, and now they're being vilified. And I think the even more upsetting thing is, is that people are buying this apology, and now victims are seeing that even if you do come forward, even if you do share your story, even if you're able to express what happened to you and you have the courage to do that, even if that happens, it doesn't really matter because all your person has to do is claim ignorance. All they have to do is say, well, I didn't know. I wasn't aware. And now the public forgives them. Now there's this forgiveness. Now they can just move on and continue to be millionaires and some of the most successful people on a culturally relevant platform like YouTube. And here's the thing. There's all this rhetoric about online so much rhetoric about is James Charles actually a, a p is he actually a p is he act or was he just this young kid who didn't fully know what he was doing there's this back and forth debate like yeah I can a lot of people I feel like fall on the side of yeah I can admit that he was wrong but I don't think he's a I don't think he's going that far. And frankly, I want to believe that too. My initial gut instinct was to believe that this wasn't some sick and sinister monster that I was watching. Because our gut instincts as human beings is to believe what people are telling us. Our gut instinct is to believe that James Charles, who is one of the most subscribed to makeup channels on this platform, does not secretly have pet but the problem is, historically, we know that that's not true. We know that people in power can think that way and be criminal in that way. We see it time and time and time again. It is shoved in our faces, all of these celebrities and politicians and businessmen who are doing these horrifically heinous things behind the scenes. And that is what is being exposed about James Charles right now. He has done these horrifically heinous things behind the scenes, but people don't want to believe it. And here's the thing, like I, like I said, I get it. I I get why people don't want to believe that. But even if you don't want to believe that, even if you're not willing to go that far with what you think he did, he has self-admittedly abused his power and there needs to be punishments and repercussions for those actions. He refused to understand how his power impacted and affected other people after the Bi Sister scandal and went on to continue to terrorize groups of people and cross moral and ethical boundaries that we as a society have set up to protect children. By continuing to give James Charles this same level of power, what are we saying to the kids who came forward? What do we say to those victims by continuing to platform him and give him all of this attention and fame and money? What are we saying to those people? What are we saying to all victims of this? by continuing to allow someone. And this is what I don't get, and maybe you can disagree with me, but I don't understand why everybody on this uh, fucking app needs a redemption arc. I don't get it. I don't get why everybody needs some fucking magical story where they magically become a better person and they get better and they've learned and they've grown and they change. Fuck that. We don't need that. We don't need this person on this app anymore. We don't need this person being the face of the fucking beauty community, okay? I'm so sick of it. All of these people, time and time again, it's like, well, they've grown and changed. Who gives a shit? 
being a YouTuber is not some right. You don't have a right to be the top YouTuber on the platform. It is a privilege. And when you abuse that privilege, and when you cross so many lines time and time again, you should be deplatformed. If the police aren't going to do anything about this situation, which they absolutely should be, then we as the YouTube community need to be doing something about it. YouTube. Hey, Susan, demonetize him. Demonetize his channel. Stop giving him the attention that he deserves. Stop putting every video that he makes on the fucking trending page. Not everybody needs a redemption arc. Not everybody can be redeemed. Even if he goes on to become a great person 10 years from now, that's fantastic. That doesn't mean he deserves all of what he has right now because he doesn't. He abused it and he doesn't deserve it. I believe that he could probably grow and learn from this and stop this and stop hurting people and never hurt another person again. I believe that he can do that. I have to believe that people can do that. I have to believe that people can grow and they can change and they can learn from their mistakes, but that does not mean he should be redeemed to the point of the success he had before this mistake. Actions have consequences, and I feel like that is what needs to be talked about. There has to be consequences, and quite frankly, James, if you're watching this, because I am positive you're not, but if you are, if you are perfectly okay with admitting that you fucked up and you were the one in the wrong and you did the bad things, if you truly believed that, instead of trying to take a month off to plan your comeback, you should be turning yourself into the police. You should be holding yourself accountable to the highest degree. Because if you truly understood the way that you abused your power and in turn abused other people, then you of all people would want to be held accountable. You of all people would want to be, I don't know, doing community service, court mandated counseling, like all of these things, jail, like all of these things, you have self-admittedly done these things, you should be facing the ramifications and the repercussions for that. Some things can't be forgiven. Some things shouldn't be forgiven. And this is one of those things that I do not think should be forgiven. I think that if we continually as a YouTube community allow James Charles back on this platform as if nothing happened. I truly believe that we will be taking so many steps backwards in the strides that we have been taking to help victims come forward of these crimes. I truly think that all of the work that has been done the past few years especially to really hold people who abuse power accountable will be taking steps back by allowing him back on this platform in the same capacity. And just as like a final note, I mean, we and this, I don't know if this message is going to get I don't think James is going to watch this video. I don't think that, you know, his team, I don't, I don't think that he's going to read your comments criticizing him. I very would highly suspect that he is just blocking himself off to all of this. Because, you know, that makes sense. I believe that he's blocking himself off to all of this. But I would bet money that his team is watching every video and reading every comment to gauge public perception. So I would just say to his team, I would just make sure that behind the scenes he is still being held accountable the same way that people on the internet are trying to hold him accountable. Because nothing is actually going to change. If he didn't change after being called out during the Bi Sister scandal, if if he didn't learn from that situation and all he took away from that was that he was untouchable enough to continue to do these things, if he didn't learn then, I don't think he's going to learn now either. I have very, very little hope that he's going to learn now unless the people behind the scenes are holding him accountable and talking to him about these things and not letting him off the hook for these things. If the police can't do anything, the YouTube community should be doing something. We should be doing something. He should not be representing us anymore. I don't know. I'm really interested to know what you guys think about all this. I feel like we're at a reckoning right now between the David Dobrik stuff and the James Charles stuff and everything. And honestly, I'm glad. I'm glad that this, as, as upsetting as this is to watch happen, as upsetting as it is to see the rhetoric online of people being so quick to believe and forgive just because they want to, as upsetting as all of that is, and as upsetting as it is to see people that have been hurt and victimized by this, I am happy that we are finally having people come forward and talking about this. And I am happy that we are weeding out the people in power who do not deserve to be in power anymore. I'm happy that people who were previously abusing their power can no longer do so, at least comfortably. Like, he can't do this anymore now. And I, I think that that is a positive thing, at least. Let me know what you guys think about this down below. I'm very interested to hear your thoughts on everything. And yeah, please take care of yourselves. I'm going to have, I always have mental health resources linked down below in every video, but I'm going to highlight them for this video because I think that if you need to talk to somebody about everything that's happening, you absolutely should. It's a disgusting situation that's happening right now. Um, I love you guys so much. If you like this video, like and subscribe. Um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. I'm not going to do my full outro. It feels weird. I just yelled. My head hurts. Um, <laughs> I love you guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!
Bye-bye. Uh-huh.